Let's bring them out. Uh, one of our favorite shield maidens. Uh, she has made her way uh, through many of the brothers uh, of the Vikings, uh, to name uh, some of them. Jarl Borg, uh, Erlendor, um, Ube. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but let's bring her out. Playing Torvi, it's Georgia Hurst, everyone. Hey, Georgia. Thank you for I'm, I'm not sure about that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. I know. I like made their way, like, you know. What do you mean? But... Yeah, not like. Uh, I know. It's, well, we know what happens on the series, you Listen. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And listen, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, obviously, it is the story of some of our famous male Vikings, but the women are really the the the, the backstory. You know what I mean? They're the uh, they're the the people behind those men. And yeah. I think what's and I think uh, Torvi and behind again, every I'll, strong woman is uh, behind every strong man is a strong woman. Oh my it? gosh! And uh, that's one of the most beautiful things about this series is you really see in that culture specifically how well regarded the the women were. Obviously, there's some things that happen to them that is less than fortunate. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. just like happened to this upcoming character, but um, they're also regarded for their strength and their wisdom, and you know they're uh, taking care of their families and upbringing. So, um, Torvi definitely one of those women, in addition to many of the other characters. So <laughs> sorry. Sorry that I set you up that way, <laughs> Georgia. Uh, let's bring out uh, this next guest. Uh, just joining us in season six, but again, such an important character and another strong uh, woman that has come through. Uh, a citizen of Katagat, uh, the secret mistress of uh, Bjorn Ironside, uh, Ingrid. Let's bring out Lucy Martin. Hello. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, both of you uh, ladies, again, so good to have you. What an amazing series. There is a lot of historical fiction out there, you know, historical fiction series uh, out there. Uh, I know Georgia, uh, your father specifically, Michael, has created uh, The Tudors and, and numerous um, other series. Uh, what do you think, I, I just want to get things started and then we're going to go to our fans. We have fans watching from around the globe on Facebook, uh, Twitch, uh, and YouTube. Uh, and there we're going to be going to their questions. So if you do have a question, fans, make sure to tag at Wizard World and submit your questions live. Uh, but I just want to let's start with you, Georgia. You know, what, what has it been like to be part of this series? And what do you think sets Vikings apart and made it so successful, uh, given, you know, a lot of competition out there from other historical dramas and historical fictions? <laughs> Well, I kind of think you hit the nail on the head uh, at the beginning of this conversation. Um, yeah. Talk about the strong women. And I certainly think uh, Lagatha, played by Catherine Winnick, was yes. really the, um, the kind of pulling force. People were really attracted to the series because she was just badass. And it obviously, yeah. Travis Fimmel, who's Ragnar, is amazing and everyone loves him. But I really do think that my dad really made a show for strong women and there really aren't that many shows that do that and um so i kind of think that was that was it and who doesn't want to play like a badass woman like yeah. in leather sh wielding a sword like obviously yes please <laughs> um, and it was amazing to be part of it obviously it's been um, a great adventure i must say yeah was there um being involved so early in in the early seasons, uh, obviously every show you know takes a little while to get that traction with fans. You know, mm -hmm. it, it debuted on History Channel, which before Vikings, really, you know, they had a few like mini they series. Like ice, they did like Ice Road Truckers, which, I <laughs> but it was just a different. Um, Thing. Yeah, different thing. You know, there are a lot of reality series, like you said, Georgia. Um, I think there were a couple of mini series on some of like the American revolutions and things like that, but really nothing like this. Um, what, what, when was the moment where you sort of saw like, oh, this is like for a fictional series, you know, on a historic network or, you know, a, a channel based on history. You know, when did you see that popularity start to grow? Yeah, it's funny you say that. I remember season two and season three. I ne I didn't didn't really think much of it. As in, I still, even in season six, to be fair, I would go to work and I would just be with my mates going to work. I never remembered anyone was watching. I really oh, yeah. would never think of it that way. I'd just be like, oh, my scenes are done for the day. Go out with my friends now. <laughs> and then you'd watch the TV and be like, oh, yes, people are actually seeing this. So I think it was probably season four. Um, I went to LA, actually, with Josephine and Ida, who played Margaret and Astrid yes and we were at a coffee shop and um I was greeted by a, a sort of team of paparazzi and I was like Kim Kardashian's here guys <laughs> I was like and Josephine was like smile they're looking at you and I was like <laughs> and I think that was literally the first time up in, and then that trip I hit I think 10,000k on Instagram and then ever since then it's been kind of a big deal but until then I yeah. kind of 
I never really noticed. And especially in England, I don't always get a lot of people recognizing me. But when people come up to me in clubs and stuff, I remember um, that it's a thing or they come up to me in the street. So I'm always surprised, but it's a nice, it's, it's a nice feeling. But I never, I never, I, I kind of still don't realize how much of a big deal it is. Yeah. There was, there was a hunger, you know, back then and a lot of, again, competition, obviously game of Thrones was a huge series, uh, at the time. Um, and Vikings was coming in as this, uh, again, new, we, we were seeing just from the previews, like swords and axes and, and, and we were like, Oh, it's just another game of Thrones. Right. But no, it really did something different. Uh, like you said, uh, it portrayed famous characters from history and, and really, you know, uh, took them hard, obviously historical fiction. There are yeah, some exactly. fictionalized yeah. moments, but, um, also, a lot of uh, of us history nerds like myself yeah. could go look it up on Google and Wikipedia and be like, "Oh man, Ragnar was a real person. That's so cool!" And like this did happen. And then you know now we're seeing it kind of you know in this fun, fun fictionalized uh, world. Super mm-hmm. awesome, Lucy. Tell us a little bit about. Obviously, you joined us um, in season six. Um, and uh, what a, that's such another and one of my favorite parts of the show is that just when you think you've like got the established characters and you know like who's in charge or who's boss or who's going to be king or queen you know like another Mm -hmm. character comes into the mix and kind of starts to mess with things (laughs) not mess with with things but you know be part of the storyline what was it like coming in uh, in season six uh, you know and being a a new part of this already successful show um yeah it was amazing i think because it was already it was already at such a level um I was probably very nervous <laughs> and I didn't actually know what was going to happen with my character at the time. Sure. So, um, that, and I never actually knew it was when I'd get the next episode that I actually knew what was going on. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. <laughs> I loved, I love being a part of the show. It's weird. I'm just as excited to see the next half. Um, because obviously you do it and then, you kind of not forget about it, but you don't, you don't know what it's going to look like or you don't sure. know how it's going to be portrayed or what people are going to think. So, um, and is it, you know, it's, I know everyone ended in a different state depending on what time things were. You guys are completely finished production wise with season six in terms of filming. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So we, so, so you know what's happening, but we don't know what's going to happen. So we don't, we don't want to spoil, <laughs> we don't want to spoil it for the fans. You know, we might talk a little bit about what you're excited for, not giving away plot details, but just like you know what you're looking for for the potential. I know we're doing you know a potential spinoff coming up, but you know this could be the end of this sort of arc, if you will. You know of Ragnar and his family. So uh, we're sad to see that part go, but we're excited to see. Uh, the ending of it uh, coming up. Uh, there, uh, there are a ton of folks watching from around the world. I just want to give a shout out to our fans uh, watching from Italy right now, Nashville, New Jersey, Connecticut, Oklahoma, Arkansas, France, London, Finland. Uh, this series like truly has a a wide range, uh, and it's so amazing. So I want to get to some of their questions. Uh, this is specifically from a lot of people are asking um, similar questions about your favorite moments. So this is from Lady Lizzie, uh, who's watching and also uh, Clomidgard. Oh, Clomidgard. I like that. It's kind of like a, a, got a Nor- Norwegian uh, flair to it. Uh, Clomidgard is watching from France. And just as curious from both of you, what do you have a favorite scene or a favorite character moment from the series uh, so far? Uh, Georgia, you have obviously a lot more to pull from. Lucy, you've got your uh, the first the first half of yeah. the season six <laughs> yeah. that, that we've seen. Maybe we'll start with you, Lucy. We'll give Georgia some time to think. Um, but coming in, you know, has, has there been a a favorite moment or scene that that you've uh, been excited to see? Um, from the first half, uh, my favorite scene was probably my opening scene um, that I did because uh, I actually that happened on my first day of shooting. It's like my first ever day. Um, and I just remember like walking around the set and being like, this is amazing <laughs> mm-hmm. and suddenly going down. Um, so yeah, it's quite a vivid memory for me. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be, that's, that's my favorite scene. I reckon. Very cool. Awesome. Georgia thoughts. I mean, I have, I, I have so many and I'm sure <laughs> I've forgotten. So many as well. Um, I, I liked giving birth. I thought that was pretty epic. I mean, it was definitely a challenge. In the UK, we have a show called One Born Every Minute, which if you're English, you'll know is just an hour episode of women giving birth. (laughs) And I watched a lot of that. And I did a lot lot of practicing. And Jordan, who plays uh, Uber, was there with me. And he said he was traumatized afterwards because I really screamed bloody murder. Like I was going for it. 
that was pretty epic. Any any fight scenes, really. The first season I did fight stuff, I was so out of my element. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't <laughs> like it at all. Um, and then I came back after a long break for the next season. And suddenly I was like, well, I'll just throw myself into it. Even if I'm not the most technical, I'll just throw myself into it. And um, I did, and I had a lot of fun. And those were always the best to watch back because you just felt particularly badass. So I would say any kind of stunt stuff, riding horse stuff, you always felt pretty empowered doing that. Yeah, and that's, uh, it, I shouted out a bunch of countries and then all the, the rest of them tuned in or wanted to shout out as well. Romania is watching, Germany is watching, Greece. Oh my gosh, uh, so cool. And Tyria, uh, there's a person watching on Twitch with the hashtag uh, at you know their handle, Tyrion Lannister, which is obviously a classic character from Game of Thrones that said Vikings was way better than Game of Thrones. So we even have a Game of Thrones yeah. fan that is saying alive <laughs> that Vikings that means is- the world to me. No, my gosh, that's <laughs> huge. Tyrion Lannister himself is saying that Vikings is better. No. Um, Georgia, you mentioned uh, the fight scenes. Obviously, such a huge part of the show uh, mm -hmm. is their focus on those battles and those epic battles, uh, which is, again, it's another part of everyone's favorite part of the show. And Jeremy's underscore MC, I was just curious what kind of prep uh, is needed for the battle scenes, sword, you know, and any kind of sword choreography uh, that you had to do? Um, well, usually like the week before, you might have two or three sessions to go over the choreography. Me, on the other hand, being the annoying person that I am, would insist okay. on about three weeks preparation, which was really irritating to the stunt coordinators because they'd have to then, they'd have to prepare my things separately, like way in <laughs> advance. But I was like, I just would have to know every single move. And they would always tell me like, Georgia, on the day, this will probably change. And I'd be like, no, that's fine. I just have to like know what I'm doing. So for me, it would be about three weeks. And even on the day, I'd be so nervous. I'd be practicing with the stunt guys right up until we called action. And then Jordan would be like, oh yeah, I've only done these once. And then he'd be like whipping around. Like he was the best at stunts. I mean, I have to say he was so skilled. Um, he just naturally, his body just moved in that direction. Like I would just... I just was a bit like my feet and my hands weren't coordinated. Um, so for me, about three weeks for the average person, probably a couple of sessions for a week. And then on the day, it would just be, it would, it would all go up. It, like it would just change completely and mud would be flung in your face and it would just be a whole other story. <laughs> was there a particular, any injuries on set? You know, we never want any of that to happen, yeah. but, but with that yeah. amount of people throwing, you know, swords at each other, yeah, obviously. There were broken bones, bloody head, like, People got oh. whacked. I hit my stunt guy right in the head um, <laughs> by mistake, obviously. Um, so there were a few group, kind of gruesome injuries, especially when you're that cold and it's muddy and it's slippy. Like you have to be very careful. Sure. And accidents happen. You hit your fingers. You know, I'd always have bloody knuckles and stuff. But luckily I got away unscathed. And actually I would ask um, Tom McInerney, who was head of makeup, every time I did a battle, I'd be like, please give me a scar on my face. I just really feel like and he would <laughs> never let me, unfortunately. But I tried. <laughs> Didn't work in my favor. Lucy, any, um, I, I, I'll be completely honest. I've gotten, I've started season six after kind of binging through five. And so I don't know everything that happens to your character. And I know we're only like a few episodes in, but any, any big kind of things on set that, that were especially epic, uh, for Ingrid, uh, in terms of prep work or sort of getting ready for it? Um, well, I had a rape scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah. that was, uh, there was obviously that actually does involve like stunt work or the way that we played it anyway. Um, yep, for sure. Um, so I did have some prep for that. So it's a bit darker, but, <laughs> um, a mental preparation, I would imagine for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I mean, even after we, even after we did the scene, I remember still like taking a, it took me a minute to sort of come out of it. Um, but, um, yeah, but, but, that the the director who I was working with at the time, he was amazing, and um, and so was Peter, who I was working with. So, um, yeah, it was it was um, yeah, <laughs> that was a bit, a bit of a learning curve doing that, but that was good. No, for sure. And uh, this is Taylor Nicole asked the question: What was the hardest obstacle slash scene you had to face? I, I imagine it was that scene, Lucy. Yes, it, well, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, and yeah, it was. Yeah, I think I think Georgia. Um, uh, got it there just like preparing for that scene because I, it's quite difficult to prepare for that if you if um 
uh, if you haven't experienced anything like that. So. Yeah. And um, obviously the show doesn't, shy away from brutality when it comes to both war and physical, but then also rape and, and on that such. And, you know, I think it does a good job, does a, a, a good job as best a job as you can of, of addressing that this was something that happened, you know what I mean? And, and let's see, you know, how these characters kind of handle it and deal with it. But um, tough, tough scenes, tough scenes uh, for sure. And, and not also something- you have that scene, I think where Lagatha doesn't she, um, doesn't she rape Harold? Yeah. So we have it both ways, which I think is quite good as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was kind of, that was kind of important, I think, for, for Catherine to have that scene. So there's a, there's a lot of interesting dynamics going on. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you think? So obviously we mentioned at the beginning that obviously it's the, this is based on historical characters, you know, people that existed. Uh, there are some liberties taken, obviously, to make it dramatic and, you know, make it entertaining for TV. Um, it's historical fiction, but it doesn't, you know, shy away from that. But um, so I, again, I'm a super huge Viking history nerd and Norwegian mythology nerd, uh, Eric F1506. And I love that they bring the mythology in because it, it's going to be easier to like ignore that and be like, no, it's just history. But they bring in the, the, the magical, you know, maybe magical yeah. is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? The magical side of mythical. things as well. <laughs> mythical. There we go. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, the mythical side of things as well. And Eric F1506 is just wondering, you know, what did you what did you know about Vikings and Viking history and mythology before coming into the series? Or did you do any kind of research leading into uh, bringing on your roles? Well, I knew very little about it other than my dad was writing the show, um, but I still w didn't really know what it was about or anything. And before I got involved, I did do a little bit of research. I discovered that um, they were very clean, the cleanest of yeah. all people apparently um, and that was pretty much it um, I was really thrown in the dark and I learned so much along the way I mean I learned about rituals I did so many rituals as Torvi a lot of them you haven't seen yet um, but I learned a lot of Old Norse I mean things just their kind of their habitual things that they do when they have babies and when they move into new houses, they bless the house. I mean, things like that. I just never, never knew. And sure. a lot of it, I don't think you necessarily find online. You find a lot of the kind of um, sort of surface level information. And when you're on set, um, I can't say what happens in the next season, but you will see, I learned a whole new bit of history, um, which I, I just learned so much. And I, didn't, I definitely would never have had any of that education if it hadn't been for the show. So I learned on the job, but I learned a lot, I like to think. It's, such a, it's a beautiful mythology for sure. And it's so interesting to see different cultures, you know, what they grew up with and, and what they continue to believe in. It's very, yeah. very, very cool. Lucy, any, any sort of prior research or prior knowledge of, of Viking history um, or mythology? No, unfortunately not. Not until I was actually auditioning for the show and then I watched the whole show. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I didn't. But again, at the same, I learned a lot on the show um, and finally reading her script as well because we got the, sent the whole thing, just reading everything through. Um, yeah. Is there anything that sticks out to you, um, both of you, uh, as being particularly intriguing. Um, I know, Georgia, you mentioned the rituals and sort of their, the way they went through their daily lives and things like that. But I don't know, anything, anything else from their mythology that stuck out to you is like, oh, that's, that's very cool or, or interesting. Their sacrifices that they did, that they sacrificed themselves a lot of the time and that yeah. you can't sacrifice yourself when you're pregnant. I learned the hard way. Um, <laughs> so that's, that was news to me. And um, also that I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but they were all very, um, sexually fluid, apparently. Yeah. Um, there was really no criticizing who you loved, who you fancied. And I think really they had a pretty, they had a pretty level headed way of living, you know, um, they had a very clear system. And sometimes I feel like we could take a leaf out of the Vikings books because they actually did things quite well. If someone was in trouble they just sort them out and they bring them to the town hall and everyone would have a big discussion about it. So I kind of think they lived a, a more of a straightforward life and um, they were interesting people. I mean, they really were. 
That's a great way to put it. It was, uh, yeah, there no, no politics other than the sword, right? You know what I mean? It was whoever, yeah. And it, the, the series starts that, uh, starts that off within the first few episodes, you know, of like that trial scene and how it's just really about the people all yeah. deciding together what yeah. they think is important, you know, as a group. Mm-hmm. Obviously there's, there's different levels and, 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 and taking cool. over and things like that. But yeah, when it comes down to it, it's all, it's all uh, up to the people uh, yeah. no matter of race or gender, you know, anything like exactly. that, just so. Yeah, this is uh, we mentioned strong women up front. And this is a question specifically coming from Ashes to Dust 93. How does it feel? Um, We talked about we acknowledge that the series is really uh, surrounded by strong women, but uh, they want to know personally, you know, how does it feel playing such a strong female role model for women today um, in the series? Lucy, I think is that is that for you or me? <laughs> for, for, yeah, for both of you. I know. I mean, I know we haven't seen much of Ingrid yet, but obviously, still a strong character. You know, um, yeah. Or just knowing that the series has that resonation, you know, with fans. You know, that they're seeing the strong women and acknowledging that that's an important message for today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really empowering. Yes. I mean, it was something that I I loved about the show when I watched it. Um, it was actually Catherine's performance that I. Uh, I, when I first met her, I said, I just, I think your performance in the show is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and to be a female in the show um, and uh, to watch other female actors was, um, yeah, it was just a really empowering, empowering feeling. Um, and like Georgia said earlier, there aren't many shows that, um, that have that, uh, that each individual is, is that strong. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. very empowering. What do you think, Georgia? Yeah, I agree. And I, and I feel like also um, there's so many levels to being like a strong woman, yes. which isn't always wielding, a, you know, a sword. It's having children and being a great mother and be, being in love. And I, I felt like um, we make funny jokes about Torvi going through half of Kattegat, which, which is fun, which is fair play and it's funny. But really, I was like, she's a young girl. She probably <laughs> fancies a lot of people. She dates Bjorn. Bjorn cheats on her. She dumps him. Her brother's <laughs> really lovely and says he loves her. And, you know, I kind of wanted Torvi to be like human. Um, the, the amazing thing about Lagatha is that she's got that almost superhuman strength. Like she yeah. is, she is holds the show up like she needs to be strong but I really wanted to be strong and very human and I wanted to cry and have breakups and have children and have nightmare situations I felt like that would make a really well-rounded character and I think people like someone who you can see their faults and you can see their weaknesses so I think Torvi I mean the latter part of the show you'll see she kind of stops fighting she she kind of just wants to have a family and focus on being a being a mother and I still felt like Torvi, if anything, was even stronger then than when she was fighting in battle. So I think that the idea of a strong woman, there's so many different like sides of that um, that I think, you know, are, are embodied in the show. No, that's a that's a that's an awesome point, because I think the common misconception these days is, yeah, being a strong woman means, oh, you have to have a career. But that means you can't have a family. You know what I mean? But oh, but really. Yeah. But this series, it sets off, uh, sets it up super early with uh, Lagatha, uh, you know, with the scene. Uh, again, this is like season one, but um, some folks come into her home to rape her. She's there with her children. And not only is she taking care of her children, but she's able to fight for herself yeah, at the exactly. same time. And we see that over time and time again, where, you know, Ragnar, you know, did some cool things, but you know, he leaves, he comes back, you know, she's yeah. stuck with, she's doing the family and defending her country at the same time. And exactly. yeah, was, yeah. and I, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler for fans. So spoiler alert, if you haven't caught up in season six yet, yeah. uh, turn your, ca- turn your cameras off right now, turn your cameras <laughs> off right now. But it, but it is uh, because we're just on her as a character and it, questions are coming up, obviously uh, mute, your, mute yourself. Now, uh, Tyrion Lannister specifically from before wants to know how you felt about the death, um, you know, and how emotional was that for you as a, as an actor, but then just as, as your character kind of uh, approaching that episode well, of that scene. Yeah. Well, when you are actually asked me um, what the hardest scene to film was, I was going to say that, but I don't know. A lot of people still haven't caught up. Yes. So I'm like scared, like to say, <laughs> um, but that I was actually so upset um and in a way those scenes were my favorite scenes because I felt so genuinely sad that she was leaving just as a friend from like being my friend 
I was so, I could not stop crying. I would cry the whole time. And I had these scenes where I just had to cry back to back. And my scenes were like, it was over a, a, a couple of episodes. It was something like four weeks. And I remember by the end, I literally couldn't cry. I was in these scenes like, I'm sad, but there are no tears. <laughs> like I'd literally cried, cried it all out. It was, for me, it was really hard. We're still dear friends. I saw her a few months ago and um, I love her very much, but it was uh, very hard. And I also felt for my character more than myself. Um, sure, I, sure. I felt for both of us. It was just, it was an emotional time. So that was, mm -hmm. it was really hard. Yeah. Lucy, any uh, reactions um, to that plot point? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I just, I can remember that scene. I remember you, um, Georgia, I remember your singing. And I remember watching, because at that point, the camera wasn't on me and we, we'd all moved behind. And I cried watching you. Like, but everybody was so emotional because everyone knew what was happening. And she's, yeah. and also just Catherine as a person is such a character that uh, when she was leaving, the everybody on set yep, was. I agree. Yeah, it was it was a real moment. It was also freezing as well. <laughs> uh, we were also absolutely freezing and standing still, but yeah. all actually emotional. Um, yeah, it was it was yeah it was quite a moment, wasn't it? Yeah. And where's the show primarily filmed? I know you do a lot in Ireland. Is that right? And is that where the show is primarily filmed, or you kind of bounce around? Yeah, it's mainly in Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, it's all Ireland. I think they do some of their um, wider shots. I think sometimes they do like a splinter crew to Canada, I believe, and they've Got done it. some wider shots, but that's that's never like what we're part of. And Alexander did go to Canada to do his bear fighting thing, oh. and they went to Morocco, which unfortunately I was not invited on that trip. <laughs> um, but I did keep saying to my dad, I was like, so how do you feel you know, if the Vikings went to like Hawaii. <laughs> Did they go there? <laughs> and um, uh, we did try. Um, and I think he tried as well. He tried to get it to like a warmer country. It didn't work out for us. So Ireland it was, which was great. It was just really cold. Yeah, I guess I, I guess when you sign up for a show called Vikings, you realize you're just going to be in the north somewhere. <laughs> I, know. I know. There are times when it's such horrible weather here and I look out and I just think we would have been in that at 4 a.m. Oh. Yeah. Like, all I we were called off set once um and the rest of the time snow rain anything we were there outside so it's tough and the weather changes so quickly there that within an hour it could be like snowing at one point then it's hailing then it's raining and you've got to try and get the same shot you're going to take so. off your <laughs> massive layers I mean it's just it's a lot oh my gosh yeah. Yeah, those, I mean, those historical dramas are so, so epic because of that. I mean, I mean, shout out to the showrunners and the set designers and the, all the crew yeah, yeah, and costumes. My gosh, because that's, that's really what transports us as an audience, you know, is seeing, seeing you all in, in the environments that these, these people lived in, you know, and, and, and still live in, but obviously at the time, you know, with yeah. different, um, let, let's talk about the, you mentioned the costumes a little bit. Uh, the fans always want to know about the costumes and then Stacey Hopkins wants to know, uh, cause the women have some, um, the men too, but the women have some amazing hair, um, in this and Stacey's just curious about the hair, you know, how much of it is wigs have it's done, you know, have you gotten good at doing the braids? Uh, so let's just talk about the, the hairstyles, uh, for, for tr Stacey watching out there. Hey, Stacey. <laughs> Go George, on, did you want to go? You, you've oh, got better. You had some. You had loads of hairstyles, didn't you? I'll go. Yeah, cool. Okay, I'll go. Um, <laughs> the doing their hair generally. I remember getting. I've been in the chair for. It started off quite simple, just doing braids and plaits and stuff. But it's sure. all. It was. It was all my own hair. But then sometimes I'd have extensions. Um, but as far as I think our colours were done. But yeah, it was all natural for me anyway. Um, oh. And. Um, and how long does it take you? I don't know if you said, how long like does it an, take? Like an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. An hour and a half, depending. Um, and, and also if you were doing more than one scene in one day and you had a different look, mm. then you have to go and take it all out and put it all and, and change the whole thing. I mean, they, yeah, the, the, everyone doing the hair was amazing. Um, I'm actually no good at hair. So <laughs> I was just amazed. I tried to watch. I can plait my hair now, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, I think my, I, I remember doing tall V hair Tuesdays way back. <laughs> um, and I think that's how I remember that's how my, um, Instagram started getting a little bit bigger was I would just document every hairstyle that I had yep. and that started getting people kind of interested. And then it got to a point where every single day I'd have to have a different style. 
So I would sit down and be like D, who was the head of hair, and Zalika, who who did my hair. Um, Pull them every single day. I'd be like, I just saw this on like the red carpet. And I really think if we adapt it, it would be really cool. So I had really tight cornrow braids. I had straight back high ponytails, all thanks to like modern like modern culture influencing that, which um, I just thought was really fun and really cool. And it was really my favorite part of the day was going to get my hair done. And um, I have to say, I think my hairstyles were the best on the show um, because they were always so different. And that was thanks to everyone that allowed me to have my really annoying tendencies where I'd bring a magazine in on the Monday and be like, please, <laughs> um, And by the end, I mean, it was like, it only took an hour really. And I'd sleep in my braids because they'd, be, they'd get so complicated. Um, oh. I'd end up having to, like I was punished in the end. Like I would have to sleep in these like tight braids just to make it so in the morning we would have time. Um, but it was all worth it, I think. Yeah. Have you, uh, now, and have you have acquired any skills uh, oh, besides no, Lucy's not. party? No, no. During, <laughs> lockdown, during lockdown, I had a, um, I had a braiding book and I was like, this is it. I'm going to learn to braid my hair. And I did it for like two seconds. And I was like, oh, no, no, it's not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> Actually, I, me and Catherine Winnick were thinking of coming out with a book all about braids, which we still might. So that's, um, think about that. It's interesting because that that hairstyle, especially for men, has, has kind of come back. You know, the whole shaving the side of the head with the kind of like the flop over and then, you know, the braids. I, I could see people picking that back up, those kind of old Viking hairstyles. Yeah, I can't believe yeah. how many people, I don't know about you, Lucy, but I yeah. see people in London like with that hair. And I'm yeah. like, there's only one place they would have got it from. Um, yes. I know The Last Kingdom are definitely stealing some of our styles. So <laughs> I haven't doing. been watching it. <laughs> I've just, I haven't watched it, but I've seen the adverts and they just take that really? dragon hair style um, completely, but which is all good. Um, <laughs> but, um, but we, we, we know, yeah, we know where the OGs are getting that style from and yeah. it's definitely Vikings. And I actually see it all the time. And I mm. always assume, I'm like, I wonder if they're a fan of, like I'll be like behind someone in a supermarket and I'll be like, I wonder if they watch Vikings, like they must have done. Um, yeah. So it definitely has become a trend and it's, I quite like the look. Yeah. yeah, me too. I used to love getting my hair done and everything that they did. Yeah. You sp speaking about doing hair and being in lockdown and, and, and hobbies and things, uh, a, a few fans are just curious, uh, Beach 360 specifically, wondering where you're both calling in from uh, and how you've been doing and if there's any particular hobbies you've picked up during the lockdown or, or shows you've been binging, uh, just a little personal uh, in, insight <laughs> uh, into your lives. Just let everybody know where you're, to, where you're calling in from and then what you've been doing to pass the time. I'm calling from south of Birmingham at the moment. Um, yeah, at my family home, and and I've I actually went back to London for a little bit, and then I came back to isolate here. Um, what have I been doing? I actually uh, did a yoga instructor course with oh, wow. my time. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah, it was very intense. It was like getting up at. Uh, 6 a.m. or something, which I don't usually do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a really nice time of day. Um, and uh, yeah, and I did that for a month and a bit. So I'm now technically a yoga instructor. So that's what nice. I do my time. Congrats, yeah. congrats. Do you have qualification in drinking rosé? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well. from uh, London and I have just been watching a lot of murder documentaries on Netflix, I must oh. say. It's just crime and that kind of thing. It's just it's right up my street. Anything <laughs> crime. Right now I'm on Unsolved Mysteries, which is oh. um, very scary. I, I don't know why I like to be scared. It's a, it's a strange sensation. I'm on my own, so I'm not sure it's the, like, best <laughs> idea. Um, but a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of films, a lot of Netflix. Nice. Georgia, it sounds like uh, drinking rosé and, and learning how to braid is like the next blog that you might need to start, video blog. I know. <laughs> braids and rosé or something. Yeah, yeah, braids and rosé. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on that. So. <laughs> I would watch. I think it'd be entertaining. I know a lot of the fans would watch. Um, a lot, ton of people, <laughs> while you were talking about the hair, was like, we love the hair. You, you're both beautiful. We love your hairstyle. So shout out to the fans. Uh, M-I-W Obsessed uh, says she made her husband, or maybe she, uh, made their husband sport a Viking haircut just because 
because of the series. So uh, <laughs> you, you, can, don't need you can you can see the yeah. <laughs> you can see the influence it's having. Uh, we are we are about out of time. Uh, this has been such a, a lovely little chat and conversation. Just a quick reminder to the fans: uh, if you've got specific questions that you would like to ask uh, these amazing actors, definitely head to Wizard World Virtual now. Whether you're watching this live or you're watching it a little later in the week, they are on sale for a few days after the panel. So definitely take advantage of those one-on-one -on -one video chats. You can be with a Wizard World employee and this amazing person uh, in a Zoom call and ask them you know, all of your questions. So take advantage of that. Those one-on-one -on -one video chats, they're also doing autographs and video recorded messages. So if you've got a special loved one that you want to give a little uh, birthday treat to or just a special shout out, if you're able to take advantage of those things. But I want to end with this, ladies. And we, we brought it up a couple of times. Um, obviously, we are waiting <laughs> uh, for season six. And I don't want to talk spoilers because it's more fun to watch it live and, and be into it. But, I don't uh, remember it, so... Whoa, oh, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, you if I wanted to. <laughs> that's the good answer, George. It's like, I don't remember it. It's been so long ago. Um, but a, a bunch of fans were wondering, Broken Lantern 9, um, a family of our ex, uh, a few folks are just wondering, what was it like? What were the feelings, the emotions that you had uh, shooting these final scenes um, of what we're about to see? So just, you know, maybe emotions that you had filming the final, your final days, or just even things that you're excited about, you know, what, what can we look forward to uh, moving ahead uh, with Vikings? Um, well, I was very, I was, ha I was happy it was finishing and sad. It was just a mixture of both things. I think sure. for some people, I don't know about you, Lucy, cause you weren't in it as long as me. You probably could have had a few more years in you. Whereas I felt like yeah. I'd had, I'd maxed out I, in, in the nicest way. It was amazing. Mm. I didn't feel necessarily that my character had much more to give. Um, and she has this amazing evolution. So, um, I kind of was happy leaving it where it was. Um, but the last season, I mean, it's just, it's wild. I have to say, you guys are going to see a whole new different side of Torby and Uber. And I, do, I don't think you'll be expecting uh, what you see. That's all oh. I can say. Oh, very nice. Very nice. That's good. We've done it. <laughs> so we you like can the remember it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember that it was wild and that you guys were like, Brilliant. Um, Gen general vague terms are always perfect in these kind of settings right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> epic, epic, wild, uh, unexpected. No. <laughs> Done this before. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's difficult for me to say uh, too much because I don't want to give anything away. Sure. Um, yeah, and yeah. But uh, I actually, I think, uh, well, I, I remember actually feeling quite overwhelmed when I finished, even though I hadn't been doing it that long. I think maybe because um, I was surrounded by lots of people who had been there for so long. So the energy on set was, um, again, it was, uh, yeah, it was a weird feeling, but it kind of felt like it was the right thing, that it was, that what it, that, that it was ending. Um, but yeah, but I don't really want to say about my emotions because I don't want to give anything away. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that says enough. Just that says uh, leagues what, yeah, what we're feeling, what sorry. we're excited for. No, and uh, we've we've just barely met Ingrid, and we're uh, and we've left her in a whew, a tough place, a tough place for sure. So we are excited to see how she rises up or or falls. We don't know. Um, don't give it anything away. Don't blink once if it's falls. Blink <laughs> twice it if it's... Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, well, this has been amazing. Again, uh, as, a, as a fan, I, I, and I speak for all the fans watching, again, from around the world, uh, Germany, France, the Netherlands, Finland, uh, the UK, obviously across the States, Italy, uh, Romania uh, is in the house too. My gosh, fans uh, from around the world, I just want to say thank you uh, for joining us today and giving this this nice little break from whatever we're up to, <laughs> whether it's uh, quarantining alone or with family or at work, you know, in the essential job or first responders. Anyway, shout out to everyone watching. Uh, I want to give you both just one, one little final um, chance to say goodbye to the fans and, and let us know what, I, I know things are on hold right now in terms of shooting, but we're about to get back. And I know there were some things left beforehand. So, you know, anything you'd like to say, if it's just a well wish to the fans or any upcoming projects or things that you're excited or looking forward to once we kind of get out of this and we get back to, what is now the new normal, not the same normal, but sort of the new normal. Wants to kick I off. just want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in. Yeah. It's, um, it's a kind of a time where it, platforms like this make everyone feel like united. And it's nice to have a shared interest and a shared passion. And um, I hope that I'll get to chat to some of you guys on Thursday. Yeah. And if you guys have like Xbox, PlayStation, I have like an interactive dating game that will be out soon. That's all about dating in lockdown, which I believe will be a game that is part of 
an advert on Xbox and PlayStation and all Very that cool. jazz. So keep an eye out for that and love you all. Thank you. That's Georgia. exciting, Georgia. Yeah, I did it in lockdown. I filmed That's the whole awesome. thing in lockdown. Crazy, yeah. Very cool. Sorry, I, keep, I get distracted because I keep getting a yellow shoulder from the sunshine. <laughs> um, I'm like half of me like disappears and starts glowing. Um, uh, I just want to say that I hope everyone's okay and doing well and be kind and look after yourselves. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, the fans want to know where Floki is, but we're out of time, so we can't we can't get to that question. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> we don't have time to get to that question. You'll have to tune in uh, in the fall <laughs> or December, whenever you get it. Uh, one more big round of emojis uh, for these amazing actors. Uh, we loved seeing them. Uh, please give it up one more time for Georgia Hurst and Lucy Martin, everybody. Bye. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.